Hey there, welcome back to another video. Uh, a while back, I had a video on the Myers-Briggs type INTP, personality type. Um, and I argued that when at his best, an INTP um, is probably the best example of what it means to be a Sigma male. Um, of course, there were a bunch of people in the comments uh, who didn't actually listen to the video who were arguing not all INTPs are Sigma males. That's not what I said. I have a master's degree in philosophy. I know not to make universal claims recklessly, okay? Whether or not you reach the Sigma or Alpha level of manhood depends on where you are in your personal journey. Uh, your degree of self-awareness, your, degre your degree of your sense of achievement and accomplishment and potential uh, that you actually possess within yourself. Um, and I, I argued that the INTP has an uh, intrinsic, intrinsically pretty strong sense of self. And that sets him off on the right foot in uh, taking that Sigma male journey, if you will. And then I um, may, may or may not have mentioned that the ENTP is kind of the extroverted version of the INTP in this regard, because we typically think of a Sigma male as being someone who's more, um, more inwardly focused, more introverted, um, more reflective and quieter, uh, more likely to you know, only speak when he has something to say rather than um, you know, speaking whenever he feels like he has to say something, right? Um, so there were a couple other people in the comments who, you know, talked about other types like the INTJ, the INFJ, uh, as being contenders for uh, the Sigma male personality type. And first of all, you know, these aren't hard black and white issues, okay? Um, any, uh, any person of any type um, can be can, can reach the level of being a sigma male or an alpha male, depending on um, what other personality traits um, they, they possess. Um, and generally speaking, yes, sigmas are more introverted, alphas are more extroverted, but that doesn't actually get to the core of what, um, what alpha and sigma mean. Um, it mostly has to do with uh, what it is that the person, the man, appeals to um, for his um, for for his sense of truth, for his um, pursuit of truth. Um, who has the final say uh, in in what is true, and what's the ultimate benchmark for what is true? Right. So the reason that the INTP is ideally a sigma male. Uh, is because of his first two cognitive functions, okay? Um, his first being introverted thinking and his second being extroverted intuition. Um, his first function is introverted thinking, which means that he possesses an internal logical structure for making sense of the world, making judgments about it. It's a judging function, right? Uh, the main function he uses to take in information is extroverted intuition. So he uses intuition to see patterns, but not patterns limited to any sort of specific structure out there, but rather he sees possibilities um, across the board. He has uh, generally very high um, fluid intelligence, if that makes sense. Um, you tell him, uh, come up with as many uses as you can for, uh, for a pencil, and he'll come up with more than any of the other types, generally speaking, okay? Um, so that's kind of what a Sigma male does. He uses himself, his own internal logical structure framework uh, as his main uh, mode of judgment um, for things, information, uh, processes that he gets from out there, okay? From the external world. Now, an alpha, um, doesn't exactly do that. He does appeal to external uh, benchmarks for judgment, whether he wants to admit it or not. Um, so this is signified in 
the functions of the ENTJ and the INTJ especially. Let's take the ENTJ first because I kind of look at the ENTJ as the um, equivalent, uh, the alpha equivalent to the INTP sigma. Whereas, yes, most alphas are extroverted, but not all of them are. And ENTP just, ENTJ, I'm sorry, just happens to uh, signify uh, those, those traits most, most naturally, most purely, okay? And then the INTJ is kind of the, the introverted version of that, all right? So what the ENTJ does is uh, his first mode of functioning, um, his first cognitive function is extroverted thinking rather than introverted thinking. So he primarily appeals to external logical frameworks in order to make judgments about things. So a priori systems like mathematics, like um, I guess any any belief structure that's established outside of himself, he tends to want to weigh the pros and cons of all of them and choose the one that makes the most sense to him based on his second function, introverted intuition, right? So he's perceiving sort of cherry picking data, if you will, um, with his intuition in order to uh, build a, a mode of perception that is going to make sense with whichever externally um, established logical framework is going to give him the best results. So alphas, much like ENTJs, are results focused. You know, they, they're more likely to take a um, the means justifies the ends sort of approach to even things like morality and truth. Okay, and, and research, um, which is why they tend to. Uh, work in fields that are more end focused, you know, like engineering and uh, and, and medicine and law and um, fields in which you, you have to produce something that's very tangible. Um, judging personalities in general are more oriented toward that, toward toward ends rather than uh, means in themselves, right? Um, so INTPs, uh, by contrast, are not so concerned with what their thoughts are going to produce. They're more concerned with producing quality thoughts to begin with. You know, the INTP is kind of like the thinking guy behind the scenes of the ENTJ CEO, if that makes sense. The INTP kind of helps them sort through all of the possibilities, all of the options that they have. And you know, helps the ENTJ to make a qualitative uh, distinction, whereas the ENTJ likes to have things in more quantitative terms. The INTJ especially uh, prefers that. Um, INFJ, I would say, is in this, in this weird place, you know, kind of stuck uh, between the alpha and, and sigma personality um, archetypes. And... The reason I say that is because the INFJ is much less likely than the INTJ and the ENTJ, for example, to uh, go into a field where um, he's working for someone, um, to where like he's not the master of his own destiny, so to speak. An INTP really wants that to be the case, and an ENTP does too. They tend to be more entrepreneurial, more kind of shoot from the hip day to day um, and not as ends focused, but by, you know, late uh, midlife to early sort of the last third of life, um, INTPs and INTJs and ENTJs, they, they all tend to be somewhere in the same, in the same place. But uh, the, the J's in general tend to be more willing to um, uh, sort of, you know, submit to an external structure in, in work, uh, in, in their thinking and in, in their judgment making rather than the INTPs who are a little more independent in how they think. Um, but the INFJ is both independent in the way that they think and they're quite likely to adopt an external structure in order to at least help them make sense of things, uh, help them uh, gain success.
you know, much more so than the P's. Um, so also the INFJ is much more likely to be interested in esoteric subjects, you know, uh, things like personality studies and astrology and uh, psychology and, um, you know, uh, conspiracy shit too. Um, so the INFJ tends to be, you know, not, not really categorizable in, in this way in terms of like alpha or, or sigma. So um, anyway, those are just a few reasons why I think that the INTJ and ENTJ especially um, better signify um, alpha male traits, actually, uh, rather than, than sigma male traits and uh, why the INTP and ENTP as well still hold that crown. Uh, and then the INFJ is kind of the odd duck who's, you know, uh, stuck somewhere in the middle. So hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.